these that they've listed here are commonly associated to people that would go to food as a set coping action, right? And look at what some of these are. It's a highly perfectionism, right? A perfectionist person, right? Impulsivity, harm, avoidance, reward, dependence, sensation seeking, um, neuroticism, and obsessive compulsiveness in combination with low self-directedness, assertiveness, and cooperativeness. These types of personality traits are, 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 um, are more susceptible to going. Let's go. You are incredible. Your body has a purpose. Your life has a purpose. You were designed to live the best life possible. What if I told you that your food choices and your eating habits can actually impact your identity? Well, on today's episode, I break down the reasons why and I teach you some strategies on how we can start making better food choices to start becoming the person that we desire to become. What's going on, everyone? You are tuned in to listen. You're not defeated. And this is your host, David Hernandez. If you haven't already subscribed, click the subscribe button to my channel. Click the little bell so you can get all the notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast, Podcast station, click the follow button so you don't miss an episode. In today's episode, we review a Tuesday Facebook Live that we typically do every week. So, without further ado, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go inside the studio. Mic check. Mic sound okay? Camera one good. Camera two good. All right, here we go. Happy Tuesday to all my wonderful friends and audience members. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are live here on Facebook once again. Allison, as always, it is a pleasure. It is a joy to have another Tuesday with you to have a conversation. How are you doing, girl? Thank you. Very, very good to see you as well. Doing, We're doing good. Pretty, pretty good here. Yes, Tuesday. I work on uh, Tuesday mornings, as I may have um, shared or not shared. I'm a speech language therapist by training. So um, I work with like the birth to three population, work with families, kind of kind of like a coaching method, you know, yeah. um, co- coaching style of helping families um, kind of work with their children if they're delayed a little bit in their speech and language. So today was a was a good day. We had we had some um, fun with the kids. So it was good. It was good. Some of the kids wanted to be outside and the moms and I were like, it's a hundred degrees. We're not going outside. <laughs> so yeah, it makes you, it makes you laugh. Cause it puts in perspective, like the things that we worry about, yeah. you know, the things yeah. that are going on in our lives. And sometimes people say like, Oh, but why do kids, you know, why are they so happy? And you're like, well, cause they don't have to think, worry about anything else. <laughs> you know, so I don't think about anything else. I just want to go outside and we're like, it's a hundred degrees. You can't go outside. Yeah. That's right. So, they could care less. It's there. all about having fun for them right. and just being out and playing. If and we could thing. all be more like how we were when we were kids. Yeah. Dude, I think you In can a say better, that again. It's better so situation, true. right? Yeah. 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 So tell me more about what you do. I mean, that I think that's really cool. I think you could share it to the audience. That's that's interesting to really look at a dif- a different scope of of life, but even a different scope of um of coaching right? Like I, yeah. I help many through their journey. Like I've helped you and, you know, related to health and life and, 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 and mindset and beliefs and so many different things. But yeah, I think it's a whole different dynamic when you're working with kids. It First is. of all, I mean, I, I, I want to commend you for the patience that you must have. Thank right? you. That's what everyone's also, like. You're so patient. I'm like, they're yeah. not my children. But the heart, though, I think Thank that you, needs to be there, right? I think you. You, you gotta you gotta be able to love that in in the way to be able to give the best to them. Because look, we're working. You're working with kids that you're you're really impacting their their future. They're shaping their right their their creation of like what they can become, right? Yeah, that's, that's powerful. Thank you. No, I really appreciate that. And and um, 
for me, you know, as I got started in my career, I knew that I wanted to work with kids and I knew that I wanted to be in a helping profession. And so I, mm, you know, considered cool. being a teacher. I was going to be a teacher for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as I learned more about it, I was kind of like, I want to do something a little more specialized, but not necessarily go into medicine or anything like that. So I found right. out about, you know, being a um, speech and language therapist. Um, and I started in preschool. I really enjoy working with young kids for some of the exact reasons that you're saying it's, it's, you really have this opportunity to start at such a young age and help develop, you know, whether that be their sound system, the way they're using yeah. sounds or their language, which we now, you know, later um, plays a role in reading and academics, but also the social aspect of language. Like, yeah. as you can see, like I enjoy using language and I enjoy yeah. being social. And so for me, it was kind of <laughs> like, this is perfect. So win -win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And so now what I do um, and what I've been doing for the past 10 years more specifically is um, called the Early Intervention Program in the state of Illinois. And wow. it's basically um, a state funded program where we go into the homes and we give therapy to our littlest littlest people. So anywhere That's from cool. birth, yeah, to three years old, um, at which time then they transfer over to the public school system. Right. So I really do in early intervention. Um, I'm really passionate about this coaching model. And so maybe that was, was interesting when I came to a coaching model with you that I yeah. had never done that before. Um, maybe that's part of the reason why I grabbed onto it. So, so fiercely and so quickly is because I do believe that coaching others, like we have all the knowledge and all the information mm -hmm. and the ability. Yeah. It's just, um, and so do these parents. Yeah. You know, and, Good and point. so did I, but you need sometimes some extra help. You yeah. need someone that has the knowledge that has been it, with it through other families or in your case, through other clients right? to be able to say like, okay, this is what you need. This is what you need. This is what I can steer you towards. And so, um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. I really feel like I found my niche. Um, yeah. And I, I feel blessed that I'm able to do it and I'm able to go into the homes and work with the families and, and help them feel um, empowered. Yeah. You know, that's the big word that we use in, in that, in that coaching um, model is like to feel empowered Very to cool. do this for their children in the same way you empower for us to do that for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I mean, look, anything that impacts in a way that can just make someone better especially kids, right? Yeah. I think it's fantastic. So just commend you for your work and, well, and all that you. you're doing out there. Um, those families are blessed to have you. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah. Happy Tuesday to all our audience members. If you are watching right now, drop in the comment section where you're watching from. We'd love to connect with you and just say hi. I know it's a, it's a Tuesday. You could be doing something else, but we just want to thank all those that have connected with us and that are joining in faithfully every week. Because look, when, when we started this, we're already, I think, going into our fifth week, yeah. um, a Tuesday live. And it really was just this idea of, bringing a place that we can support each other. Right. But more right. importantly, to answer tough questions and yeah. talk about, um, very deep topics, right. That sometimes we may tend to ignore or tend to avoid or not want to deep dive in because it, 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 it challenges us to it's do hard. something with this information, right? Or yeah. to do something with what's being being yeah. addressed. Boy, and I think boy. anything that really challenges us is a perfect opportunity for us to explore a new level in us. Because look, that that's what I kind of have have labeled um the process of discovery. And in this journey of set called life, we have different things that are going to be thrown at us. We're going right. to have to look at different facets of our life and analyze and reflect and look at, well, am I really happy with this area? Am I really happy with my health? Am I really happy with my performance? Am I really happy with um, my, my ability to be a parent, right? Am I mm -hmm. happy with the way I wake up in the morning? Am I happy right. with my energy level? I mean, all of these things, we've got to assess them. And yeah. we've got to really be honest with ourselves and look at, well, if I'm not happy, what am I going to do about it? Right. Right. And I, I believe that 
that's why we did this platform because it was really yeah. about let's challenge you to start taking action and do something you haven't done to be able to influence and impact that area that you might not be happy with. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's something bigger than just, and I guess that's why I feel so passionate about it. And I'm trying to share this with so many people, yeah. um, both through this platform, but also like my, my family and my friends are like, you know, see the passion that I have in it and know me, you know, know me, but I right. still think there's like this, okay, it's just about emotional eating. And I don't really struggle with that. So this isn't really pertaining to me. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to say is like, I think the same thing you're saying is like, this is so much more than that. Okay. Like, yes, yes, maybe on the surface, it looks like what that is, but this is affecting your life. And if there's, there's things in our lives as humans, we, we always want to be striving for and reflecting on, Yeah, like, you know, even if we're happy with our lives, like I'm, yeah. I'm blessed to have a very good life and, and there's wasn't anything in particular that I could pinpoint that I'm like, oh, I really hate this other than my yeah. weight, you know? Right. And then I started to realize, no, wait a minute. What are some other things that I am not happy with in my life? And that's yeah. where I was kind of at this precipice, like this point where it was like, I'm angry all the time. I'm exhausted mm -hmm. all the time. That's my right. depression and my anxiety are cycling through over and over again, cycling through, cycling through. Yeah. Like people don't see that because I'm right. able to maintain it. I'm able of to course. keep my head above the water, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm emotionally eating and I'm struggling with this for years and I'm not happy with my, you know, my habits. I'm not happy with my emotions, but I'm okay enough. But that doesn't mean I was, I wasn't happy. Yeah. Good point. You know, good point. and a lot of times we can live almost like numb, right? Yeah. By the circumstances around us. And we tend to just look at them as, oh, okay, well, yeah, they are, but uh, I can deal with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can resolve it. I'm OK. Right. I'm getting through it. It's not really affecting me in the sense of like it's stopping me from living or right. it's stopping me from doing right. the certain things. Right. But it that's not that's really not not the question here. Yeah. The question is, why should we deal with something and simply get by when we can really bring a solution to that and really explore the greatness of what your life can be, of what yeah. your health can be, right? Of what your energy level can be, of what your physicality can be, of what your joy can be around others and impacting others and, and bringing and sharing this to your kids and to their kids and being an example, being that role model, because look inside of us, we all truly aspire that, especially yeah. if, if your parents, we want to yeah. be that role model for our youngin. We want to be the role model for our daughter, for our son. We want to be the best we can for our partner, for our spouse, right? For our loved one, for yeah. our, our parents. But really it's all that stuff is good, but why can't we be the best person for us? Right. I think some of it's, you get this like, um, complacent kind of like this, like, yes. like, uh, apathy, you know, where it's just totally. like, you're, 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 this is what you've known for so long. And this is how you felt for so long. And I think that's right. where I was, you know, at like, it'd been 15, 20 years where I was like, this is who I am. This is part of what I do. And even though I didn't like it, it was like, okay, on the day to day basis, I just kind of got used to this. And this was yeah. like kind of part of who I was. Right. And I didn't really understand some of the more deeper or intricate complexities as to why this was making me not very happy in a lot of areas of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why the last week we, we talked about really starting to hone in and identifying the root cause of certain behaviors that we are doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And in these episodes, we're talking about food, right? Because mm -hmm. in terms of health, food impacts everything and what we are doing with what we are experiencing or going through or how we are dealing with it is really the critical question here. Yeah. How are you dealing with your circumstances when something arises, when a conflict arises that might produce anger in you, that might produce sadness, that might produce some type of emotional response? How are you dealing with that? What are you doing to find relief, to find ease right to find peace to find joy to just 
release yourself from that experience, from that emotional connection that you've had because of a certain situation that's happened. And yeah. addressing that, if we're looking at food being the answer for you, well, we need to look at food is not intended for that reason. So if that's my go-to, I have now gone into a behavior pattern that is causing me to do something that is unhealthy, that in the long run, as I repeat this pattern, it's really going to set me up for a life of so many unforeseen yeah. circumstances, right? Yeah. Health-wise, emotional-wise, uh, uh, um, um, cognitive-wise, yeah. right? And, and, and then everything else can follow. Right. And we started talking about addressing and looking at the root cause of those things for you. And we started breaking down kind of your own coaching process and how I, how I worked with you personally through this process. But we also started to talk about the identity piece, right? Yeah. Because there, there was something really profound in our conversation that today I want to start addressing is really this identity piece that starts to become who we are. It starts to become who we start to live out on a day-to-day -day basis when we have fallen into this particular coping action, no matter what it is. If you're going right. to food, right, to release your emotions, that's an unhealthy coping action. Yeah. And in that, the umbrella is kind of eating disorder, right? That's the umbrella, right? Right. If we're, if we're being, if we're giving it a medical term, right. Or a diagnosis mm -hmm. term, emotional eating, stress eating, any type of, of action that you're taking towards food to release your emotions falls under particular eating disorder. That's yeah. how it's looked at, right? right? That's how it's labeled as, but in there we find emotional eating, stress eating, boredom eating, binge eating, right. Overeating, anorexia, bulimia, and, and several and things similar to that. Now, when we falling into these particular patterns, it starts to impact who we are. Mm -hmm. It starts to impact and shape our identity. I'd like you to share, Allison, a little bit more. We touched on it slightly last week, but I really would like to take this whole entire episode today to really break that down and look at what that disconnection was for you in terms of your identity of who you now had started to believe you were, who you had adopted to become, and what your life was looking like because of this behavior pattern that you had been doing for so many years. Mm hmm well, I think that, you know, where I kind of was, was this like wanting to be in control so badly of um, something, you know, yeah. because I felt like in certain aspects of my life, I wasn't being perfect at it, you know, and I wasn't meeting yeah. this like strange bar of what I should be doing. And I, you know, I should never yell at my kids. My, sh my kids should always listen to me because if they respect me and they love me and I'm, I'm doing a good job, yeah. then I should never have to yell or I should, or, you know, I should never argue and, and, and be annoyed with my mom or my brother, because if I was a good enough daughter and if I was a good enough sister, um, ABC would not be happening, you know? Yeah. So I had kind of put this in my identity where these things, you know, are out of my control. And so what can I do? You know, what can I control? Well, yeah. well okay. I know what I can control. I can control what I eat. I can control mm -hmm. when I eat, how much I eat, what kind of food I eat. Um, and, and so that's kind of how it started, you know, yeah. but then what quickly happened is it became out of control. Mm. So it was this thing that I, that I kind of set up to, to help me cope with strong emotions. You know, I, it became then out of control for me, but that yeah. became my identity. Like I can't control this, you mm. know? And so it's like, I had these two kind of um, things going on at once, yeah. you know, and it was a constant like battle with myself. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, that's what I was living on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I was not just with food, but also with anger and how I would deal with that. And, and came to the realization that like, 
I didn't really have any good coping mechanisms other than this. Yeah. But it really wasn't a good one. Of course. Because I wasn't in control of it. And it wasn't really fulfilling any of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a big psychological um, struggle right there. In any circumstance that we're living, if we feel that we can't control, if already, right, we we have this certain personality that mm-hmm. like, I want to be in control of things, right? And and sometimes I'm not particularly saying you, but it can even go to a very unhealthy extreme that it can become a bit narcissistic, right? Like you mm-hmm. want to have everything in control and you be in control of how everything functions. Now or it's all about you. It's yeah, all about me. It's about absolutely the, like every aspect of my life. Yeah. It's about like my role. If I did this, this would be different. This would be different. Yeah. It's like, why am I in all this? Mm-hmm. What does that have to do with me? And often it was also a part of my relationships. Like the way people responded, if I didn't like that, it was, I put myself into it. Yeah. You know, like I had anything to do really with what their choices were and how they were acting. So I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so just, just to, to break this down, your desire to control. And because you could not control, you felt out of control. So we now look at, okay, if I'm feeling this uneasiness, right? I feel um, out of control in, in my environment, right? It's almost like a fish out of the water. It just, it, it doesn't feel good. It, mm-hmm. it, it desires that it wants that simply because it, I, I, I want to be able to understand things. I want to be able to, to, to have a better control of these things for my sake, which to a degree, that's okay. That's good. But when it starts to get a bit out of control, we now start to be in an uncomfortable situation that leads us to, okay, like you said, what can I then control? Right. What choice can I make right now that I can feel since I can't control this, I can make this choice and gain back the control to kind of offset this feeling that I'm having to bring a sense of satisfaction that is that is filling what's been missing to then be, oh, okay, it, it'll be okay. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's going to work out, right? And we sort of, we sort of, um, fall into this trap to where it's like we're numbing ourselves with this desire of like, okay, I'm in control. I'm in control. I can control what I eat. I can control when I eat. Right. And the, and the, the bizarre, not even bizarre, but the, um, the crazy aspect of this is that why food becomes the choice of many is because food never says no to you. Right. Food is always there. Right. It's available for you, right? You can yeah. find it anywhere. Yeah. So therefore, it gives you this sense of power of like, okay, yeah, I, I have the that. power. I can, I, yeah. I, I got this. I'm going to control it. I'm going to make this right. choice. I'm going to do this. And now it's going to make me feel empowered. And nobody's going to ever tell me I can't do it and I, not to stop, right? And so we psychologically, right, start to fall into this this trap so that we can fill a void or fill a need or substitute yeah. that need with what I can control in this case, food, but then something happens. And before we get into that, there was a study that USC did. And I talk about it a little bit on the podcast that I've released today, mm-hmm. where I talk about how trauma has a direct link to weight gain. If you all haven't seen uh, today's podcast, go check it out. You can find it on my YouTube channel, or you can find it on your favorite podcast station under listen, you're not defeated, or you can also search it under my name, David Hernandez. I break down how trauma has that effect. And I bring some research into that. But in this USC did a study and they evaluated a hundred 100,000 men and women. And they found out that um, eating disorders from anorexia to binge eating and bulimia, binge eating, meaning you just out of control are eating, right? Um, And bulimia to compulsive overeating can also be a way for victims to abuse or victims of abuse to exert control over their own worlds or bodies. So how do they exert control in this way? Going to food, right? So it's this sense of I'm in control. 
I can deal with it. I'm going to solve it, right? I'm empowered. I feel good. It's okay. But what happens is that what seemed at one point to be a controlling answer for you, right? As an answer to you being in control quickly, like you said, becomes out of control. Right. Why? Because that behavior pattern becomes so, because it, it's in a sense, satisfying your lack of control, giving you power, right? you abuse, yeah. right? Yeah. You keep going and keep going and keep going. And therefore food, because we've talked about it, what it does to our body, the tolerance levels are out of control. The lipids in, in our hormones, in our body that send a signal to our brain to say, I'm full now go out of control too. Yeah. And now we have gone from control to out of control, making now everything such a dangerous aspect for you, because now it's just leading to not only this desire of unsatisfaction, meaning you need more, you need more, you need more, you need more, which now then starts to even question you, right? you as a person, you again, as your identity, as your personality. So now we're back to this vicious cycle of yeah. feeling like you're out of control. Right. Right. How was that experience for you? You know, it's interesting because it, it, when I first started doing this behavior, uh, like I said, like really, really, really engaging in these um, coping, you know, using food to cope. Uh, I was in my 20s. At first, it felt good because yeah. it was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm choosing to do this, mm. even though it was a destructive behavior. Yeah. You know, it's like, OK, I'm choosing it and this makes me feel good and this distracts me. Ultimately, I used it as like a distraction, you know, because it because I didn't want to think about things yeah. that I didn't like how I was doing or in my relationships or if I was questioning my my worth or my value. But then at some point, and it's hard for me to pinpoint when it, it's like it's it switched, it flip flopped on me. And then it was like as soon as I was starting to engage in that behavior I knew I was doing it. It was no longer mindless. I was very aware of it. And it didn't even give me satisfaction anymore. Wow. It was yeah. immediately followed by feelings of, I am out of control. I can't do this. This is disgusting. Why do I continue to engage in something that I know is not destructive and that I do not enjoy? Yeah. It became this whole like, so now something that once brought me some distraction or comfort or, or, or you know, um, reward. Yeah. yeah. No longer, not only did it do that, but then it was immediately accompanied by these complete opposite feelings. Yeah, of course. And so yeah. for me, you know, it's like, I can't pinpoint when that happened, but now that's where I've been or was for a really long time. And yeah. that just wears on you and it wears on you. And even if you, you know, have a very positive growth mindset and you say, okay, this time it's going to be different. This time I'm going to try this and this is going to work. And you go to bed and you wake up and maybe you do it for a couple of days. And then it, ultimately it just happens again. And yeah. then with each time, yeah. you feel less and less like you're ever really going to get out of it. Of course. Like it's ever really going to change. So then what did that start doing to your identity? What did that start doing to you as a person? Well, it, this is who I am now. That's how I felt like this is who I am. I cannot control myself. And I became a little more angry and a little more angry. And, and you know, I noticed that I would um, try so hard to control certain aspects of, of relationships. Like, yeah. you know, I would be worried about my mom or upset with my brother. And like, I would just really harp on these things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they were not the things that I was doing in the relationship. They were the things that the other person was doing, That's but it's right. like, I wanted so badly to be able to control that or for that person to view things the way I view things or the way that I think I would handle situations Yeah, that then that became a control issue. And then it was like, and I didn't know I was doing that, but it was like, okay, well now I'm in control. I'm not in control of food and I'm still doing all these destructive behaviors but it doesn't even feel good anymore. Cause now this is out of control. What else can I control? That's what right. else can I do? And so then that led, that led to a lot of, um, 
discouraging feelings in some relationships, including with my children. You know, it was like, if I, if I could do this right, and if I could do parenting just right and make good choices, and then my, then, then, then my kids would listen to me most of the time and they wouldn't argue with me and they wouldn't fight with me. Now I realize that like, that was so convoluted, like that didn't make any sense, you know, but in those moments, that's what it did to me. It created this identity of just searching to find control over something and, and, and be, I don't know, just, just in control of something, you know, so that I could identify with that. Um, I lost my identity in a way. Like I, I I started being a more irritable kind of like short tempered, wanted to sleep Mm -hmm. all the time. Um, that anxiety and depression that kind of ebbed and flowed in, in my twenties, just like it was under control. But now that I look back, it wasn't, you know, I, I kept trying to fight my way out of it and I couldn't. Yeah. 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 And I remember as we were breaking down a lot of those things in our assessments every week, it was really looking at there, there was a pattern that was repeating. It was, I lost control. I feel out of control with food. Now with every other experience that we were having your, that you were having with people, it was like everything about what they were doing was now being challenged by how they're doing it versus how I would do it. Right. Yeah. So that irritability, that anger, that rage, that frustration towards your mom, towards your brother, it wasn't really anything about what they were doing. It's really about what you were reflecting about yourself, right. seeing that you wanted them to do it the way you did it or how you should do it. Right. In the concept of your mind trying to find control. So therefore that anger would come up, that yeah. emotion would come up, right. That frustration until we stopped and we said, wait, but what about that is making you angry, right? right? What about her not doing this in this way is making you angry, right? Yeah. She's another person. She can decide how she wants to do her things, right? right. She can decide if she wants to um, go to this appointment or not, or do her exercises or not, right? All we can do is encourage but if that anger comes out, it's really about assessing, well, why is it coming up? Where is yeah. that stemming from? And yeah. for you, that control piece was a big one. So now we're constantly looking at how can I get in control? How can I be right. in control? And feel like I'm of some value. Yes. You know, like, like, where's my, where's my compass? Like, how do I decide if I'm a good mom, if I'm a good right. wife, if I'm a good sister, if I'm, you know, yeah. what is the measurement here? Because yeah. that's how I would measure my worth and my value yeah. for the for my previous life, you know, that's grades, right. scholarships, clubs, job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And it was then looking at, well, what is it about all these things that are making you feel this way and really starting to get honest with ourselves? And how do we combat a thought that says, I am not a good mom, Right. How do we challenge that? Well, we got to break it down and look at, well, is this absolutely true? Right. Remember that exercise? Yeah. Is yeah. this absolutely true? Where's the because in that, the because in that, what was happening is your critical self was trying to look for a justification as to why you were responding to this. Look, for all the audience out there, we have... We're, we have ourself that we see, and we also have another side of us, which is our, in, our, in, our, in our thoughts, right? Which is critical self that tends to always want to find an answer for everything that happens to you. So if something happens, right, that let's say you told your kids to do something and they didn't do it, critical self if you don't take control of that feeling in that moment, right? We don't, which, which we're going to talk about in another episode to like, really, what are we doing with our emotions? How do we address our emotions? How do we address our feelings? Right. If we don't do what we should in that moment, critical self is going to come back and say, well, it's because you're not a good mom. That's why they're not listening to you. Right. It's because you're just not good enough. It's because you, you, you're not effective in it. Right. Right. And so We've got to be able to address these issues because whatever we don't address, it starts to lead to 
unhealthy, destructive actions and behavior choices that we make. Yes. That could be in that moment, anger and rage comes right. up, right? And now we take out what was really our issue out on them because it has nothing to do with them not doing something. It's that what they're doing is making you feel disrespected, unwanted, unvalued, right? Not good enough, right? As if you don't exist, but that's not a them issue. It's a me issue because we haven't addressed where is that coming from? What is causing me to feel this way? Yes. Very well explained. Yes. And if we don't start to break this down, right? That's why it's so important to have stability in our emotions, to be able to take control of our emotions and be able to release and deal with them in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Be able to recognize what is this? Why did this come up? Where does this come from, right? Why is this right now something so impactful for me? Yeah. And, and, and with you, we did... A, an exercise which was really answering these questions, right? Mm -hmm. That we had, or these thoughts of self that were coming up that were questioning your identity, your mm -hmm. person, right? I'm not a good, I'm not a good mom. Okay. Well, what is the truth about that? Yeah. Is that really, really true? Right? What is the definition of a good mom? We broke right. that down. Right. Yeah. In, in your, in my mind, what, yeah. What's yeah. the definition of that? Right. And then what is the definition of being an, a, a terrible mom? Right. Right. Breaking that down and then looking at, well, is it really true that you're not a good mom? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's looking for that evidence of that irrational right. statement. That's you know, right. It's like, exactly. it's like, this is a thinking trap that we fall into and it becomes so ingrained in our automatic thoughts that we don't even know we're doing it. That's right. And that's, that's kind of right. like for as much knowledge as I, as I had um, achieved, you know, going through cognitive behavioral psychological therapy, you know, in my twenties and helping me, you know, become aware of these, I still sat at this level. Yeah. Where it's like, oh yeah, okay. Sometimes I'm not nice to myself. I talk, you know, not nice to myself. I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I'm really critical of myself. Like yeah. I kind of knew those things. Right. This is why I have anxiety. This mm -hmm. is why I have depression because of mm -hmm. these type of thoughts, because of these type of things. But I didn't really understand that next level. You yeah. Know yeah. That can be influenced by a behavior. Yeah. It's influenced by you going to food. Like going back the other way. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and I, I love that you brought up the, the personality traits, right. Yeah. Um, in terms of you being a perfectionist and, and, and being, um, this person that you are right. Yeah. That, that, that you've it's just become been. in life. Right. Yeah. And so I was doing some, I was doing some additional research because I love, getting more insight and getting more insight. And I came across this, um, this study that they did uh -huh. and it talks about how there are personality traits that are commonly associated with eating disorders. And this eating disorder, again, could be binge eating, right? Overeating, anorexia, bulimia, um, compulsive overeating, right? Those are all under the umbrella of eating disorder when we're talking about it in medical terms, right? Yeah. And these personality traits, meaning what is the person like, mm -hmm. right? The type of personality that they are, these that they've listed here are commonly associated to people that would go to food as a set coping action, right? Mm -hmm. And look at what some of these are. It's a highly perfectionism, right? A perfectionist person, mm. right? Impulsivity, harm, avoidance, reward, dependence, sensation seeking, mm. um, neuroticism, and ob obsessive compulsiveness in combination with low self-directedness, assertiveness, and cooperativeness. Mm. These types of personality traits are, 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 um, are more susceptible to going to food as their coping mechanism, right? That is very so, interesting. So this personality just 
um, it it basically exaggerates your desire or it exaggerates the behavior action, right? So now it it. makes you vulnerable to it. Yeah. More susceptible to do it. It like, it just, you're, you're more prone to do this coping action and releasing your emotions in this way as a sense of comfort, as an answer to whatever it is you're dealing with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and when we're looking at like the oceans, um, personality trait. If, for example, somebody that's more conscientious, right? If they tell him or her and say, huh, y- you look skinny today or you look fat today, that person is more um, at risk of or, or vulnerable to hold on to that. Mm-hmm. It's going to impact that person more, right? That person's going to hold on to it more in their, in, in, in their, in their soul, in their emotions, it's going to do an, it's going to afflict them. Then somebody that's, for example, let's say an extrovert, an extrovert. Yeah. Yeah. Or somebody that's a bit more open. Yeah. I can see that's so funny because it's, it's really two different personality types, but it's like the same underlying reason. Yeah. Like for me, you know, I'm not an introvert, you know? And so, and so sometimes but for me, I'm more that what they call, you know, the, that type A personality where yeah. I kind of like things organized and, and, and orderly, you know, and it, I can see how that does make you, for me anyway, because that's I'm that type of personality, yeah. how that makes you more pers- susceptible to this because yeah. it's like this little control thing and this everything right. about how I'm in this and, and it's very interesting. Well, look, let's break down these personality traits, right? Let's look at a high, uh, a high perfectionist person. Like, let's say you, why do they go to food? Again, a sense of control, right? Yeah. A person that is very impulsive. Why do they go to food again? Because it's like this impulsive thing of like gain control and power, yeah. right? It's there. It's, it's easy to fall into that because it's there. It's not going to fight back, no. right? It's not going to challenge you. And, and then you know so what? we look. It's yeah. like alcohol, but except alcohol and drugs, you're going to have like a more possibility of having a negative effect. That's you right. Know, like you're immediately yeah. going to be drunk or you're going to yeah. be high and you're going to get right. in trouble because somebody's going to yeah. see that. But it's like eating. It's like you can hide it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but it's still to me, it's that same thing where it's like I'm impulsive, like I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to it can't talk back to me. No one can tell me not to That's do it. Right. Do it. Yes. 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 And so then we look at an obsessive compulsive person, right? Or a harm avoidance, right? Now they go to it for the opposite reason mm-hmm. for comfort, mm-hmm. right? I, I avoid harm. That means I'm a bit more introverted, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't, I avoid conflict. I avoid confrontations. I avoid being maybe out in public with a lot of people where there's yeah. loud things going and there's violence going, or there's like a bunch of chaos going. I, I, I tend to kind of stay away. Right. Yeah. And when I'm harmed or I'm afflicted or something, I have the tendency of going to this for the reason of <sighs> comfort. Comfort. Yeah. Let me, let me find my, my ease in this. Let me just kind of, uh, a, a lot's happened. Let me just, yeah. just calm down a little bit. Right. <laughs> and, and then we, we go to the next one, right. Reward dependence. That's a given one. Why it activates our reward response right. in our brain when we're going myself. to food. Not so therefore, oh my gosh, yes, let's celebrate. Yeah. Let's go yeah. out. I got a diploma. I want something, right? Let's yeah. go celebrate. And yeah. that was a big one for you. Definitely. Definitely. I think that that's that, that, um, seeking that, you know, see, seeking that input. Yeah. Um, and then when you get to a point where you don't have that tangible, uh, maybe like you did when you were younger in some way, shape or form, you're going to seek something else out to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And then sensation seekers. I mean, that's, that's a given. Yeah. What, yeah. What, the sensation seeker is like, they, they, they want to feel everything is touchy, right? Everything is feely, feely. Everything is goodness. Yeah. Why food? 
Well, because it does that to you. Exactly. There's different sensations right. that you get out of it, right? This is a physiological from the taste, proof. From yeah. the texture, from the way it 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 applies into your your the your mouth, right? To how it makes you feel physically in your body, to yeah. the 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 rush and the high and the excitement and the celebration around it, right? Yeah. Food is very easy in that. And then, like I said, compulsive in combinations with low self-directiveness again if they're low self-directiveness right they're a, a bit more they want that for comfort right um and then assertiveness type a that assertive type of yeah. person right yeah what is that no one's going to tell me what to do no I'm one's going to tell it. me how to eat i'm going to do it anyway it. if i yeah. want it i'm going to have it if i like it i'm going to have it i don't care what it does to me i don't care how it impacts me i just want it and i want it now right That's my dad yeah totally totally but, but that's, you see that's really how, fascinating. You see how how crucial this information is? And then cooperativeness, right? It's like, oh, I cooperate easy, but it's like these are the ones that you you go to work and they have a a luncheon for the work and they say, oh, everybody has to join in and oh, yeah. okay, yeah, we have to be a part of it, right? There are those that, that tag along, that want to be a part of something, that right. want to feel accepted, right? That was even my best friend. Right. Yeah. He wanted to be in that type of environment to, to feel wanted, to feel accepted. So even our personality traits. Speak and can be a direct connection to the behavior choices that we're making. Yeah. This is powerful stuff. Totally. Like it makes sense when you say it, but I never thought about that before. Like it puts you at risk. Yeah, it does. Anyway, yeah. And in the same way, like I talk about in the, in the food behavior quadrant that I put together in mm -hmm. quadrant three, when I talk about physical and emotional responses, mm -hmm. like that being our alert system, which we're going to get to in the next coming weeks, as we keep breaking down the food behavior quadrant, yeah. it's really about this awareness about knowing who am I, this information, if I identify, or if any of you identified with any of these personality traits, look. That is information for you. That is awareness for you so that that could be an alarm system for you in the sense of if this is me, I've got to be careful yeah. because I can have a natural tendency of wanting to go to these things, of right. wanting to go to food to release, of find answers, to find, to, to find relief. And so having this information is going to empower you to what, to be alert, to more, to, to, to be more intentional about you to be present. Right. And to be able to look at, huh, is this me? Am I falling into this a lot more frequent and a lot easier? So that then we can come back and we can start breaking down those reasons. Well, why? Where does this come from? Why am I this type of person, right? Yeah. Because again, even a lot of the things of who we are in terms of a person have also been learned, right? Have totally. also been developed in those developmental years from zero to seven years old, mm -hmm. right? Well, what is that? right? Where does that stem from? Who did I adopt it from? But more importantly, even with that is just to have insight and let you know that you, if this is one of your personalities, look, we, we got to be careful. We, we got to be more present about this and not just allow myself to just, oh, this is who I am. Okay. This is who I, who you are, but like, you can still control that. Right. Right. Not accepting that as a, as a, like a prophecy, you know, like a self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. That's what I was looking for. We're like, oh, wow, okay, this well, is just me. So deal I with just it. do this. And, and this is just who I am. And, you know, I'm, you know, and there, there was a period of time where I fell into that where it's like, oh, I kind of react, you know, I'm a reactor yeah. where I'm an emotional person, you know, and that's just part of my personality. So this is just part of this. I'm just going to have to live with this. Yeah. And hopefully I can find an, a diet that, can combat this enough, mm -hmm. you know, that I'll be able mm -hmm. to balance it, yeah. you know, but, but just accepting like, Oh, this is just what I do. This is just who I am. I can't stop this. No, but like you learned part, a different yeah. outcome. Totally. And I feel 100% mm -hmm. so like empowered by the fact that that's not true. 
That's just like I said, when right. I realized like this was a behavior and I could change it and it was learned and here's why, you know, those things like with each layer of learning, like it lifted this responsibility. Again, yeah. it wasn't all about me or my That's right. fault. That's right. You know, and, right. and I think even this knowledge about like these personality traits, it not being a negative thing, but putting you in, in a place where you might be more susceptible to engaging in these type of behaviors or falling into these traps, like that's knowledge. And even, yeah. even now I'm like, oh, that makes me feel kind of like it was less something that I had control over. Yeah, that's right. So I, I really think that's very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, very cool. cool. I, I think that's great to know. Yeah. Well, to all those audience members out there that are watching us or that are listening right now, drop in the comment section if you have any thoughts on, on what we just shared. Um, if you have any questions, we'll take a, a, a few minutes there to take in any questions. Are there any comments coming in I at see all? That, you know, Cynthia, you know, she's saying like, you know, associated with that when we were talking about the cycle of this behavior where it's like, you want to have control, you have control. Yes, I have control. And then shame. And you yes. feel so ashamed, so disgusted with yourself. So yeah. Like, oh, see, you aren't in control of everything. It's like this vicious cycle. Like she can yeah. relate to that, you know? Yeah. And also, you know, in, in reference to the study that we were talking about, she says, you know, every personality type, you know, both introverts, extroverts, um, both type A personalities or type B or C, you know, personalities, like you can fall victim to this, but the, the reasons behind it are different. But, and I think yeah. she's probably right, you know, but it's important to understand like, are these reasons maybe you can relate to, or, or you know, it helps you understand, which is big thing in, in your coaching program, like the why. That's right. Like, right. why am I more susceptible to this? What yeah. personality yeah. trait, not negative or positive, just yeah. what it's trait just is what it? It's it part of who I am that makes me go to these things. That's right. That's right. Which yeah. is why it's so important that I stress when I put together the food behavior quadrant, that step one, quadrant one was yeah. identifying these areas. Yeah. And we spent almost a month in that one, yes. if not a bit more. Right. And I kept saying, I know this, I know this, <laughs> I know this, yeah. you know, and I, and I did know some of it, Yeah. you know, um, because of my, my years in therapy and because I'm 41 years old, you know, and, and pretty self-aware, like, but I didn't realize this core issue, which was this two selves kind of thing, you know, where yeah. this critical, critical part of me and then this, this other part of me and always being in combat. With each other. Yeah, they were in conflict all the time, right? And until we didn't identify what was causing the conflict, what was making the conflict occur, yeah. it was impossible to address it. And it was impossible to interrupt that conflict, right? right? Which means we're going to be able to interrupt that behavior pattern to then make it stop. Yeah. Which is why in such a short time, you were able to put an end to it and stop it because yeah. we literally got to the, the main sources of that the main roots of that the main causes of that we interrupted it using the food never... behavior quadrant. Yes, that was it. And listen, I was never able to do this. And this was, I keep telling people, like people say, oh my gosh, you're so good at this and you're so self-aware and lucky for you. I'm so proud of you that you were able to do this and figure this out. And I say, yeah, but here's the funny part. I went to therapy, which is supposed to be like the gold standard of yeah. figuring out your thinking traps, figuring out what's rational, what's not rational about, you know, where's the proof into these statements that you're saying to yourself, yeah. I did it for five or six years. That's crazy. And I still never was able to quite get to what we got to. So, I mean, I think I just want people to understand that, but like this program is different yeah. and, and I can't stress that enough. Like, yes, it takes in some psychology, which now we know is a huge part of why we engage in these behaviors, Yeah, you know? And, and I just want people to understand that, like, it, it's just not about the overeating. Like for That's me, right. anyway. That's right. Yeah. Like yeah. it's about so much more. It's about these other behaviors that I was engaging, you know, predicting what other people were thinking. Mm, that's um, a good one. Mind yeah. reading, you know, what these people were thinking. Yeah. Um, making it so that I, my control or my part in something was always the biggest thing when yeah. sometimes it didn't have anything to do with me. 
right. forget what that one is, but you know, like some of these mm-hmm. things that I was doing, this anger, this yelling, this irritability, like these were other behaviors that once I addressed this, what we're talking about, like these core things, not only did it help dissipate and erase this emotional eating, this addiction to sugar, this yeah. other areas of my life that I was out of control with, like being angry, you know, mm. being, having to be in control of everything yeah. in my relationships. Like these areas have been profoundly impacted. That's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. Look, that's that, kind of my takeaway, even that, though you didn't that's ask why, my There's my takeaway. No, 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 no. But I love it because that is why I'm so just passionate about what yes. I do. Right. And I yes. absolutely love it for these reasons to hear these stories, to hear somebody's life completely shifted and now is impacting and inspiring others, right? Being that model, being yeah. that person that is still in process, right? Still in right. the journey of, yes, of, of developing the life that she wants, 100%. but is able to carry and impact others along the way because you did it yourself. Yeah. Right? That's exciting. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, freaking phenomenal. It is. And I just feel like it's, it's impacted my life in so much more than just, even though, trust me, like that emotional eating behavior was destructive and impacting me every, yeah. every day for many years. Yeah. But it's been like, what I thought was the primary thing has now become the secondary thing. Yeah. The losing the weight, the changing the shape of my body, the stopping being a sugar addict. Like, yeah, those are things that had to change and they in did. order for me to be the person I wanted to be and be living the life I wanted to be, yeah. which I feel like I'm doing, but there was so much more other stuff that started happening first. Yeah. And now those other awesome. things that were to me, the primary reasons why I was doing what I was doing, they're happening. Yeah. Like I'm losing weight. My body right. is changing. My habits are changing. That's right. Um, I'm not taking my, um, anxiety medicine. Oh my, my depression gosh, that and anxiety is huge. Yeah. Girl, so I know I was telling for that. You, yes. Yes. That's yes. one of and the things again, we talked about that we wanted to get off. I wanted to try Heck it. Yeah. I wanted to try it. And again, talk about, I mean, this is kind of just the last thing I want to share. Like I've been on um, depression, and anxiety medicine since I was 20. And truly, wow. honestly, so I, I suffered from some anxiety in high school that I was always able to just keep it under control. Um, yeah. It probably could have benefited because I do believe that your chemical, you know, transmitters, um, Mm -hmm. epinephrine, you know, and and dopamine, and I forget the other one. Like, I do believe that there was an imbalance there. This wasn't a band aid. Like there was, Mm -hmm. but I now realize that like, I'm able to get those back in whack. And so, you know, in where they're supposed to be. So for the first time in 21 years, you know, I came to a place where I said to my doctor, you know, I want to try this. I want to just try to go to half. Let me yeah. just see what I feel. There is no shame in being on this medicine. Of course it's not. not what I'm saying. Of course not. Absolutely. This was not my ultimate goal. It was not to get off of it. It's just, if you don't need to be on medicine, don't be on what medicine. For? You know? That's right. Well, let me try it. So over the you know course of the past two months, just under the advice of, you know, the, the direction of my doctor have been titrating kind of down and really aware and being honest with myself. Like, yeah. Do I feel like this is rising? Am I? And, and what's making me realize is, while I do believe that there was a actual physiological chemical imbalance, like yeah. that's a real thing. Like, yeah, it is. No Absolutely. Doubt. Absolutely. But these underlying thoughts, these mm. underlying beliefs about myself were stronger than I really realized. Because yeah. now that I've changed them and I've also changed my sugar addiction, right. I've also changed my nutrition. That's I've right. changed my focus on what my health yeah. and wellness is. That is working itself out. It's fantastic. I mean, it's wow. probably also because I'm 41, David. I mean, so you live and you learn too. Yeah. But, but still. I will say, yeah. Yeah. Like I, that's, and that, that's not, that wasn't the purpose in any way, shape or form. But again, that's an added bonus that I wasn't even seeking out or valuing when I started. That's right. So that's right. That's fantastic. I mean, thanks. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And thank you for your part. Because look, but, but you see how powerful that occur that happens when you start to work on yourself, 
we really start to get to the root of these issues that have shaped and formed who I am as a person. Because when I work on myself, everything else has to change. Yes. Your body, your mindset, your energy, your emotions, your feelings, how you deal with things, your habits, everything changes. It's, it, it, it's just inevitable. It is. And there's the example, your life, right? And that is wonderful. Right. And so many others that are being impacted that I have the privilege of being able to support and help. And they're just um, putting themselves first, because when you decide to put yourself first and invest in yourself and in your health, right, your well-being. Yes, there's no telling what can happen. And therefore, that is where the process of discovery comes into play. You are now discovering who you can become, what your life can look like, yeah. who you can inspire. You're now on this road that you road of impacting so many other people that three months ago, that was never in your in your mind. I thought I would be doing this on Tuesday nights. That's right. That's Come amazing. on. That's it. Amazing. That's, it. That's great. Well, and I just so, hope that, yeah, I can help just share this information. I love that. I love that. And so for all the wonderful audience members, look, you can do it the same way Allison did it. Look, with this information that we're bringing with you each week is literally the information that she's used to impact her life and start to take actions. So I wanted, we just want to invite you as she shared her, her closing thoughts and just gives her given her final uh, moments to speak on this as we close today's episode. I just want to invite you. Look, if this is you, you can identify with anything that we talked about today, right? Or with anything that Allison has shared. If you have pinpointed and say, yeah, I can relate that to me right now, or, or I'm, I'm battling with that. I'm struggling with that. Look, I just want to invite you. Let's connect. Let's have a conversation. Let's, let's support each other and utilize this as your support system, as your platform to be able to one, get hope because look, we, we got to have hope, right? We may be in positions and moments where we just feel hopeless, but look, th this is a place where we're speaking hope to you. That is the purpose of what we do to speak hope, to bring encouragement, to bring um, motivation and inspiration to show that if Allison can do it, and so many of my other students who next week, we're going to have an amazing, um, powerful woman, uh, Cynthia. Many of you know her. She's, she's been a student and client of mine for, 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 for many years. I've had the privilege of just coaching because she desires to keep getting better. She's going to share a couple of things with us next week. But if they can do it, you can too. And it really doesn't matter where you're at because you're going to hear her story. And, and I, I don't want to steal her thunder, but she was in a very a uh, 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 um, delicate state in her life where it was either this worked or that was it for her life. And I know she, she inspired uh, Allison and it was because through her that we were able to connect. And so look, if they can do it, you can do it. Right. Yeah. And I want to support, I want to serve you in any way. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have anything that you feel that is just, just, you, you haven't got answers to look, let me try and help, right? You can connect with me. You can connect with Allison, any question that you might have about her process and, and what she went through and how she did it. Look, reach out. You can send us a DM. You can connect with us right here on Facebook or across all social media platforms. You can connect with me. You can connect on my handle at Dave K Hernandez. Dave K. Hernandez, you can reach out. Let's connect. Let's have a conversation and just know that you can also have a deeper conversation. If you DM me here on Facebook, or if you just want to have a conversation with me, you can set that up on my website, www.davidhernandez.co. That is davidhernandez.co. Let's connect and have a conversation. Any questions that you might have, you can send them to e by email to listen, not defeated at gmail.com. Listen, not defeated at gmail.com. And I will help you in that area. Allison, as always, my friend, you are wonderful. Were there any other closing comments there that we have not addressed? No, sir. I got it. Okay. I think All I got right. too good about what I shared. Yeah. All right. All right. And anybody else share anything else um, in the comment sections that we may have not addressed? Oh, Cynthia was also asking like, where do we get that personality type test? Like she's curious. I think the, okay. 
I forget the one. Very cool. There is a website and uh, you can find it on um, Google. You can just put Ocean's personality test. Okay. I will put a link there at in the comment section. You can go ahead and copy that link and paste it in your uh, URL so and, one uh, in your browser and you can do it. Yeah. Awareness awareness good point. awareness like yes increase your awareness about these things by yes. listening to some of the podcasts by asking questions like yes. not asking you to do anything but just increase your awareness because i think that getting that knowledge and getting some of that awareness of yourself of your behaviors of your underlying causes of maybe i need help with this reach out yeah. like yeah that's right I do love it that. just do it I love that. Well, well said, my friend. Thank so you. thank you so much for tuning in. We are grateful to have you on today, to have you on our side. And just know, look, we are here to support you. If you want more information about how I impacted Allison's life and any of what I do in terms of my coaching and mentorship, look, you can reach out to me on my website, again, davidhernandez.co, or simply shoot me a DM or drop it in the comments there, and I will connect with you. My friend, Allison, you're incredible. Have a fantastic evening, and Thank I will you see too. you next week on Tuesday, same time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and same place here on Facebook Live. Have a wonderful evening, my friend. Sounds good. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>